Hi, everyone. I'm Joey Katz, Director of Special Programming for Boston Jewish Film. Welcome to the fifth annual Boston Israeli Film Festival. The Boston Israeli Film Festival is made possible through the generous support of the Fine Family Foundation, Massachusetts Cultural Council, Combined Jewish Philanthropies, our friends at the Consulate General of Israel to New England, and you, our pass holders and ticket buyers. Thank you so much for sticking around after the screening for this Q&A for matchmaking. We are so thrilled to be joined by Erez Tedmore, Marnie Wolf, and Avner Shavit, our guest moderator for this conversation. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Thank you very much for Hi. having us. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we're gonna go a little. We're gonna go around. I'm gonna read some bios, and then I'm gonna hand things over over to Avner. Um, we're gonna start with Erez. Erez Tedmore is an Ophir-winning director whose films have screened at and won awards at numerous high-profile international film festivals, including Sundance, Locarno, and the Jerusalem International Film Festival. His shorts and feature-length films have also screened at numerous Boston Jewish film festivals and programs, including Strangers, Dear God, and Magic Men. We are thrilled to be presenting his newest feature, Matchmaking, which was Israel's biggest box office hit in 2022. Marnie Wolf is an American-born, Israeli-raised actress who's been rising up through the industry within recent years. Marnie is a trained professional in theater, finding success in commercials, voiceovers, TV, and films, reaching millions of viewers worldwide. Marnie has also been invited to uh, for countless guest appearances, reporting for ILTV and Israel's Channel 14, to present Israeli news nationwide and across the globe on personal topics she's passionate about. Being raised in Israel, Marnie comes from a strong Jewish home and is proud to be representing her roots in the new film, Matchmaking, in her breakout role as Naomi Friedlander, where she was quoted as a gift to Israeli cinema by film critic Avner Shavid. And Avner Shavid is one of the preeminent film critics in Israel. He's been covering both the local and international scenes for two decades, and has been a consistent presence at major film festivals, including Cannes, Venice and Berlin. He's also a sought after interviewer. You'll see why in this conversation. Um, he is also um, holds a PhD from New Sorbonne University in Paris, is now a visiting professor at Wesleyan. Um, you might also remember Avner as moderating the uh, closing night conversation for our 2021 Boston Jewish Film Festival. So we're thrilled to have him back. Happy to have Erez back with his films and happy to have Marnie here. So welcome everybody and I'll hand things over to Avner. Yeah, well, thank you. I'm so excited uh, to be doing this. I, you know, I, I love the film so much and more importantly, my parents love the film. So I'm honored and I, you know, I want to contextualize and say that not only that the film was uh, a huge hit in Israel, it was a cultural event. It's really a film that just like everyone watched. So I want to ask you both, Erez and Marnie, from your different perspectives, when did you understand that the film is going to explode? Or when did you understand that the film is exploding? Marnie? Um, <clears throat> um, I didn't realize until I had, a, first of all, I had an acting coach who asked me who's directing this film, and I said, Erez Tadmol. And he just stopped everything he was doing. He said, wait, Elis Tadmo, he chose you. And that's when I kind of realized, oh, this is a big deal. And then the second time was, um, I think it was at the premiere and the week following, because suddenly I started getting all these text messages from friends and family and people that I haven't spoken to in years, sending me pictures of them, of my face on the screen saying, hey, is this you? And just seeing it pop up everywhere and like celebrities talk, like that's when it hit me when it started blowing up on Instagram. And I was like, wow, this is, um, this is, this is big. This is, uh, it, th that's when it like hit. Yeah. What about yeah. you, Erez? I, 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 I tell you about the, the situation after the Corona. Uh, <laughs> maybe the <laughs> film is uh, about the, uh, weddings and the uh, matchmaking and uh, 
love, love story, comedy, but the problem uh, that we, we will worry about this film, but we worry about the timing. We didn't know that the timing is good after the corona to share the movie in the theaters. We thought maybe to, ra- to, to wait. We didn't know what to do with this. Everybody told us uh, it can be a hit and it can be not a hit. It can be a, a, a something like 15,000 people can see it. Uh, you know, uh, because people didn't come to the theaters. And, uh, and uh, we was very worried about this. You know the situation, uh, Avner, what happened uh, in the theaters. A lot of uh, uh, people that uh, go into the theaters usually didn't come. And uh, I think the first time I saw that uh, it will be maybe a hit, I don't know if it will be it, but I saw the love uh, uh, of the audience uh, in the premiere. In the premiere, because of, before the premiere, I made a, a small uh, screening. Uh, didn't send it to, to the Academy, uh, Israeli Academy, and saw what people say about the movie. I just saw it first time with the audience in the, in the premiere. In the premiere, we saw that F, uh, the lot of laughing, the lot of uh, clapping from two times in the movie. And uh, we saw the love of the movie. And after the, the premiere, I, th- this is the first time, maybe a few years ago, with the, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, a matter of size, I, 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 I felt it like this, like a rock star after the movie. <laughs> because everybody came to us and it don't happen all the time with movies. Everybody wait for me to, to speak with me, with, the, with my producers, with my actors, with everybody in the movie. And I felt it maybe it will be good, even with the corona. This is the first time I saw it, and uh, uh, this is, was uh, two weeks before the, the opening in Israel, and it's like, you know, it's like uh, you, we've been stressed this, because we have a, a good screening, and you don't know if the audience will come. And then you, I saw in the, in the sight of the the internet site of the of the uh, cinema city that there is no tickets every all the week and this is a good um, when i saw it i said okay it's going good and from this moment i think till uh, uh, six months it's work good uh, from this moment i saw a lot of uh, you know the the screening, I said, as I see how many people uh, 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 buy tickets, and I saw that it's full, full all the time, uh, and this is the way. This is the point that I saw. I, I, I believe that it will work more than fifteen thousand people, and then they uh, everybody told me it can't be like ten, uh, one hundred thousand people it's a corona and then after we've been we've been in the two thousand and now it's three thousand so uh you know uh dreams can uh be true can true <laughs> that's what happened in this movie even in this uh situation of the corona everybody came and uh, i glad yeah, you know, the first, um, just like if I can, you know, contextualize the, you know, as, as like a journalist who covers the uh, Israeli film industry and the Israeli box office, the film pretty much saved the Israeli industry this year and, and the local box office, and it made more money than, than Spielberg and the uh, all the other Oscar-nominated films. But what's even more interesting that the film was embraced both by my parents very secular, uh, liberal Israeli Jews, and both by the Orthodox uh, community. 
And Orthodox people, Orthodox folks in Israel don't watch films in general. Don't don't watch yeah. Israeli films, don't watch international films. So I wanted to ask, and you know, maybe Marnie, you can go first. You you attended um, public screenings <clears throat> and you talked to like the religious viewers. Could you talk about their response <clears throat> to the film? Like and what made them embrace it when usually they don't like embrace or even just watch films? I, I think, first of all, I grew up in a very religious community. I grew up in Beit Shemesh, for those who don't know, it's part of it is very, very ultra-Orthodox. So I have half my family's Haredi. Um, so like I grew up in this world, so I understood where, where it was coming from. So when I spoke to friends, family, and people, because I went to the theaters myself, and it was the same reaction as the premiere, by the way, where people were cheering and screaming and clapping and cheering on. Um, I think what was so different that grabbed people with this particular movie, especially in the Haredi community, was that I think for the first time, most films, when it comes to comes to Orthodox presenting Orthodox people, it's either very heavy drama or about someone leaving the religious community. And I think people usually tend to be turned off when it's something that represents them. And I think this film, first of all, it's a romantic comedy. That's not that's very rare. And uh, to hear a Haredi story told in a romantic comedy, it's it's never been done before, I think. And I think, and I think for the first time, people felt represented in the way they wanted to be seen. And I think they also felt seen because in the story itself, there are so many characters who are living the same daily struggles, trying to find the right match, trying to be a good spouse, trying to feel loved by their spouse, trying to know if they're doing the right thing. And I think it really resonated with people and especially with that community because that's what they live. And it's, it's you know what I mean? And for the first time, I think they saw themselves in the screen that they want to aspire to be. And I think that's what made it so big. Also to keep in mind, most Israeli films, if it's not death or a tragedy or a war, it's automatically usually a slapstick humor comedy. And for this time, it was like the first genre I think that El has created that's more than just, um, it's more than just, it's it's like a middle ground of classic, like classy humor, but with a storyline that hits you. And I think that's why it exploded and resonated with the Hardy community. Anna, what about you, El? Yes, uh, um, I, I tell you, uh... There is not, not a lot of Orthodox. I don't know if Orthodox, but very uh, hardcore Orthodox, let's call them, came to the movie. I think they will wait to see it in the internet when it will be open to the, to yeah. the uh, pirates uh, films, you know, because they can't go to the theaters. They can't go to the theaters. It's a rule for them. And uh, what will happen is uh, they will see the movie like they saw Stiesel and they saw uh, uh, Shabavnikim and they saw a lot of uh, film with the uh, Rama Burstein films. Uh, they will saw it, but not now. Now the, you can find uh, 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 people like my, my uh, parents, that they, you know, they're not religion people. They could go to the movie because this is a story about people, and they can yeah. uh, laugh and cry like everyone. And uh, the other uh, society that uh, don't go to to the theater all the time is that uh, it's mizruchnikim. You know, with how we tell mizruchnikim in English. Uh, With the, you know, yeah, you I think, know, I think the, it's yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's. It'll come back to me after this interview. I think they're, yes, they're like a moderately religious. Yeah, that, yeah. That, so that, yeah, there is a lot traditional, traditional. Mm -hmm. Yes, that they can see film in uh, in theaters, and they came a lot. You know, and the Orthodox, you can find uh, sometimes uh, people that going, uh, that don't tell anyone, don't see anyone. You can see in the, in the morning, you see a lot of uh, screening. You don't know who come in the morning. 
in the 10 o'clock in the morning who come to theaters. Maybe there are, there, this is the people that they were talking about. And uh, if you saw the screening in Jerusalem uh, with the Cinema City, there is a, a two uh, theaters that are very, uh, with the, I think uh, they have 600 people in uh, one uh, a, 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 a theater and the, all the time it was full. All the time it was full. A lot of people from Jerusalem and the, the area of uh, of the uh, Modin and you can see and a lot of people in Petah Tikva cinema cin, cinema uh, old cinema uh, full of time this theater works all the time and the uh, there's a lot of people that say it, but I don't think that the Orthodox, that the story tell about them, came to the movie. And they will see it. There is time for them. Yeah. Uh, now, now, you know, we talked about the, the success. Now I want to talk about the content uh, of the film. And uh, Marnie just uh, defined it as a rom-com. And, you know, I'm an unshamefully huge fan of, of rom-coms and like your film reminded me of some of the best like reminded me of Notting Hill and some of some other classics but you know one of one of the reasons I love rom-coms is because they uh, touch on very serious subjects and I think your film matchmaking touches on the the racism in in the Orthodox society and Israeli society where you know uh, Ashkenazi families don't don't want, don't want to marry uh, with Sephardi families, meaning like uh, Jews of European origins don't want to mix with Jews uh, of North African origins, and you know I think like an untrained viewer will watch this film and he will ask, wait, 2023, this is still an issue in Israeli society, mixed marriages. So could, could you talk about, about that? Like how, how authentic and, and accurate this, this depiction is? Yes. Uh, I, I will tell you how I saw it because uh, one year before the shooting, I was uh, searching a lot of uh, people from the, uh, from the Orthodox that they, uh, the story about it in, in the movie, uh, uh, Litaim. So in the Litaim, there is no mixing. There is no mixing in this uh, uh, kind of, uh, there is a lot of uh, kind of uh, orthodox. There is a lot of people. There is a Hasidim, and you have Litaim, and you have Baalei Tshuva, and you have Breslev. But in the Litaim, uh, they don't mix. They have uh, 10 uh, generation of people that came from Lita. And they all the time keep them, all the time that they marriage with themselves. We, we don't go to another, uh, uh, maybe Mizrach or, or Sfaradim or, or, or something else. They don't like to change because they want to keep their, uh, uh, you know, their, 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 their you know, the delita, the delita, the delita. The they want to be all the time all, uh, the same. Uh, this is with the, about the, what up they they pray, how they uh, uh, eat, how they you know in Pesach what Pesach for them, what cheder it's for them. It's like saving the traditions that they have. Yes. Sorry. Yes. All the all the the things that they do, it's changed. It's very uh, strange from the uh, the Sparadim, the people that going from uh, Morocco or uh, Tripoli or Syria or something like that, where with the Arab states. And they think that the, you know, the Arab states, Jewish from Arab states, it's uh, not the, the, the good situation for them to marry because they're not the same Jewish that they want to be. It's an, another Jewish, but they, they uh, like them and they, uh, 
you know, they, uh, but they don't want to mirror, marry them. Uh, and this is the, the problem that I all the time uh, hear from a lot of people. Uh, Yaki Reisner is uh, the producer and he's uh, one of the creators. It's right, he wrote with me the movie with the Chava Divond, uh, the, uh, the three of them, of three of, uh, of us. And uh, he uh, took me to the places that all the Litaim lives and they think like that. All the time, they don't marry anyone, just in a time. And, uh, I, I, and they speak about it like, you know, like I speak about, uh, you know, the politic. They, it's okay for them to speak about this. You can, you can call it uh, racism, uh, uh, but it's racism. not for them. Racism, yeah. I think, yeah. yeah. I think for I them, it's, it, uh... it's uh, you know... Yeah, it's for them. It's uh, you know, it's like uh, they live. Yeah, I so think. I think it's also. Also... No, I don't. I just want to say. I think. I think. It, I think we can define it as casual racism. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Also, I, I think it's also when you keep traditions for so long that you, it just it just instead of searching out to branch out, it worked for them all this time. So why bother looking out when they can just stick to their own? In a way. So it's just more easy. It's more simple. The families can get along. I think. Yes. And then it just turned into this big thing where it's just like anything, any threat that would be different, be like, nope, out, you know? Yeah. Yes. I, 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 all the things that uh, you ever seen when the, in the movie uh, with the, the Arab uh, cooking. And he said, all the things that he said, I heard from uh, people uh, from the Litaim. Uh, how can you marry a, 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 a bride from, you know, from uh, Sfaradim? You can marry them. It's not the same religion for them. It's, uh, you have uh, something else. In Pesach, they, they eat uh, another food, you know. They can't be together. If they be good together, they have a hard life. That's all the time they told me. Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, you know, I think first uh, we have uh, we have ten more minutes, uh, and uh, so now I would like to ask Marni a question, and then I'll ask um, there is uh, a question. And you know, I think I think this this uh, uh, discussion is so opens like so many horizons because we learn that there are so many um, uh, branches and and you know shades shades of gray and and nuances in the you know Israeli society and in the religious society, and we're talking here about like different perspectives and different angles and you know it's so interesting. So, Marty, my question to you, which also um, pertains to different perspectives, is you're an American trained actress, and then you made a feature film in Israel. Could you talk about like what are the biggest differences between American culture and American mentality and Israeli culture and Israeli mentality? I, I bet there, there, there is a difference. You mean mentality in general? Because I could give a whole TED talk about that, but- um, <laughs> Yeah, well, maybe, you... maybe just like in, in you know, the acting method and, you know, like, just like the... Yes. Oh, and the acting, yeah, and acting. First of all, the way of direction mm -hmm. and the, the pace is very different. I've noticed the more, even though I grew up in Israel, I didn't really watch TV growing up unless it was American films. And then the more I started getting into my career as an actress in Israel, I started watching more Israeli films. And I noticed that, first of all, the pace is always more slow. Like they talk more slow, there's a lot more listening, a lot more playing moment to moment, or it's very fast paced, like da -da 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 you know what I mean? Very like fast paced or very slow. There's like no in between kind of. And also just in, in American film and acting, it's always about racing to the object, to the objective, fighting to the objective, making sure you get to the objective as quickly as possible. And in the Israeli, um, <laughs> The uh, Israeli uh, in Israeli uh, culture, I guess you could say, it's they're playing it from moment to moment, which is actually really nice because it's more human-like. It's more natural because 
when you when you when you um sorry uh when you when you act something out it, it, it feels sometimes it can be forced and then when it comes to Israeli auditions the teacher the director will say Krishna take your time like if you forget they'll think it's part of it you know what I mean just keep going and it's all about going with the flow it's much more relaxed it's much more open and if you mix up a word and you paraphrase it's not the end of the world so when whereabouts Americans are much more strict and more hands-on I think about certain things but American uh, the Israeli approach is much more relaxed and laid back but also knows when to hit that money mark you know what I mean yeah. It's very interesting. It's very interesting, the difference. And I'm trying to balance. I'm still trying to balance and figure it out because in some ways I'm so used to acting in American style films or short films. And then when I do Israeli stuff, I'm like, oh, like I have to. But these let me, these let me, it's okay. Like go with it, flow with it. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I have uh, three things, three short comments. One is that I think is maybe the most important word in like modern conversation yes. with Hebrew. I don't think it really has like a good translation, but flow with it is pretty much probably the closest. Two, I'm really interested in your TED talk on the difference between Israeli American mentality. So maybe we can do it after. And for, I just want to quote from my review on the film. And you know, I was um, objective because we had like no prior uh, acquaintances. I wrote, uh, Marni is a, a gift to Israeli cinema. And to, it's, I wrote that you're a, a gift to uh, the Israeli film industry. And Erez is my witness after watching the film. I think the first like message I, like the first line I dropped him was, who's that girl? Who who plays the, the American uh, bride? Nomi Watts. Nomi Watts. The yeah. young Nomi Watts. <laughs> Yeah. He's got the entire film and he goes, no me what, no me runs, ah, Friedlander, ah, Friedlander. <laughs> and now my husband and I, whenever, um, whenever we, we see, I don't know, we, we always just casually say to the other, ah, Friedlander, ah, she know Friedlander, I got Friedlander. <laughs> it's a joke now. <laughs> and um, Ed, as you know, we've known each other for, for many years and, you know, one of the reasons I appreciate you so much is not just because you're such a prolific and successful and fascinating filmmaker, but also because you're you're really passionate about film and and you love film and you know you love just the art of film. And so I want to talk about the cinematography of the in this film. And you mentioned Chiso and the DOP you worked with, the cinematographer Oyot, also shot Chiso and also shot um, an incredible uh, uh, Israeli TV show that's not streaming in the US, unfortunately, Minayek. And I, and, mm. and I think his work here is exceptional. The colors, the lights, you know, they're just like uh, incredible. So can you talk about you no know, Rui? Why did you choose him and how did you work yes. together? I tell you, uh, actually, Rui was uh, learned with me in Kama Obscura in the, we, in the uh, 2000, where we finished, uh, we've been together in this uh, film school. And the, all the time was the best uh, photographer ever in this uh, in this uh, school. Uh, he was so busy that uh, I can't work with him in my film, in my short film, first short film, Mush. All the time he was busy because he's very talented, and no everybody wants to work with him. And uh, we have a break for uh, he made a lot of uh, TV. And I made a lot of uh, uh, films, just uh, theater films. And uh, we met each other after uh, uh, I saw Stiesel, the season three. And I saw Menayek. And I said, okay, this is the situation. I worked all, all films. I worked with another uh, photographer, not because... Uh, uh, I, I don't uh, uh, like them after they shot a uh, film because I think uh, every film have, uh, have to be with another uh, photographer that suits to, to this kind of movie. And uh, I saw this uh, and I saw Menayek. I thought that uh, with his mind, it can, it can work to, between us in this uh, kind of film. 
And uh, I, I choose good because uh, Roy is very smart and he's very uh, good. He can do something with this camera to find the, 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 the right picture. Right picture in the, in the, in the time this is a comedy. You have to do uh, it's it's very hard. You don't know, but every uh, nobody knows that uh, it's not uh, so easy to shoot a film, a comedy film, because you have to all the time to be uh, to catch the 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 joke and the and the dialogues very good. And this is this kind of uh, 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 ph- photographer. It was the the great best uh, a gift I have uh, I have uh, with the, my career because he is the one for this. He know humor. He, he can find it. He, he loved the movie. He loved the the situation. He loved this kind of people that he shot. He shot it a lot in. Uh, Three scenes, say uh, three seasons of uh, Stissel. You know a lot. And I tell you something else. It's worked very uh, uh, good for us because when we go into Bnebrak to find the uh, places to shoot, and they all the time don't know if they can trust us. All the religion people there, and then we said, "This is the the photographer of Stissel." I said, "Oh, Stissel," and. <laughs> they go into and they give you the the everyone everywhere every yeshiva every betneset everywhere you want to shoot you can shoot with the uh, boy. Yeah. Look, I I think our time is like almost up, so I'll just end with like three very short questions. First, Marnie, I have. Don't think I'm superficial. I because actually I think it's a statement. So I just want to say that the dress yeah. that your character is wearing in the film is like so beautiful and why I think it's important because you know there's like this this prejudice like in Israeli society that like only uh, secular women can dress nicely and you know this this shows us that you know or like religious fashion can also be um, you know uh, amazing so can you talk about the, the customs in, yeah in I'd the love clothes? to uh, first of all It helped me so much to get into character even more because she made me, like the costume just made me feel so regal. I felt like I was Princess Diana was stepping in. And once I had the dress and the jewelry, it made me want to sit more like it made me want to like just be more presentable, be more classy, be more feminine. And I, I it was just amazing. I felt so beautiful. Like I would never wear that kind of clothes in real life, but I felt so beautiful and it kind of reminded me, you know, It's a shame that fashion and uh, and modesty don't seem to work together, but they can. It's just more effort. I think the reason why people don't want to mix the two is because that means you have to put more effort into things. Oh, you have to like find longer skirts. You have to find things that cover up more, but it, it can work. I mean, look at Naomi. People, the, 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 they, they, the production worked with a clothing line, I think, of a specific, of, who dress all the girls, correct me if I'm wrong, Erez, and women started buying these dresses excessively afterwards. It was a hit because people looked at Naomi and they're like, wow, she looks so beautiful. I want to feel beautiful like that. And you can, you can be modest and be beautiful. I just think we live in a society where it's just, why, why try to be modest when it's just so easy to wear a tank top? You know what I mean? It's, 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 a, it's a controversial topic, but I think it is doable. And I absolutely, it was a joy for me. I love wearing the dresses. I felt very womanly. I felt very feminine. And also what was it very interesting was, um, I remember in the beginning of uh, the beginning of the production, it just took me to the side. Like I always imagined Nomi would wear blue for some reason. I don't know why, but I remember he took me inside. He's like, we want her to wear something white because the character Nomi, she's kind of like this protagonist goddess that everybody's like trying to strive for. Like, oh, she is the one. She is the one. And so the fact that she wears white in contrast to everyone wearing black and dark colors and tones is kind of like her sitting aside me like, here's this angel coming in, uh, which I thought, I never thought of it that way. But once he said it, I was like, ah, okay. I got it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's so interesting. There's, a, there's also like a lot to be said about, you know, like religious Muslim fashion, uh, but that's like a, another subject, but, uh, you know, I think it's just yeah. like so, so interesting. And well, our time is like uh, so uh, up, but uh, so one last <laughs> question, Erez, uh is there a, a sequel in, in production? Yes, uh, there will be. Now we work in uh, Hafa Dipon and uh, Yaki Reisner. They, we do a lot of uh, zooms about it and writing a lot of treatments and a lot of things and a lot of research uh, about the next step, the next movie that we want it to be more good than the one, uh, even uh, more successful than the one. This is the, the, what we want to do. We hope it will be like this. Like we, we dream like. Bezrat Hashem. Bezrat Hashem. Bezrat Hashem. Legal. Bezrat Hashem. Well, uh, um, thank you so much, guys. Um, thank you all. Thank for you very us. much. Listening to thank us. you for having us. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all. Um, <laughs> I love the atmosphere behind you, uh, Erez. It's very, it's like the little party. I like it. Um, oh, yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Um, the, 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 gods, the gods here, here. This is the god. You know? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> um, thank you all so much for, for making the time being part of this really fantastic conversation. Um, and, you know, thank you all for tuning in today. Um, the virtual component of the fifth annual Boston Israeli Film Festival continues until Wednesday, March 29th. Um, in addition to matchmaking, you can also stream The Narrow Bridge and Concerned Citizen. Um, and to stay in touch and learn about our year-round programming, please sign up for our newsletter at bostonjfilm.org. Follow us on social media at Boston J Film. It sounds like there's going to be a sequel to this film somewhere down the road. So we'll, we'll hopefully be showing that when that happens. And Marnie, whenever anything that uh, you're working on comes out, we would love to give that a watch and bring it to Boston and have you both in Boston. Um, yeah. And, yeah. And thank you, Afner, again for this, uh, for your great moderating. Um, yeah, my honor. I'm, I'm always looking for opportunities to discuss this film. And if anyone has like a, uh, Questions I can answer, just look me up on Google of Nurshavit Wesley and drop Fantastic. me an email. I'll be happy to discuss. Fantastic. All right. Thank you all so much and take care. Thank you. Bye. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Bye. Bye bye.